Um, picking up from Martin's talk just now, you've seen he uses um, artist artist impressions of the Thames foreshore as kind of clues to uh, the fragments we see on the foreshore. What I've tried to do for um, Cannon Street is to look at um, how artists over a long period of time have looked at that area and um, just to get a, an understanding of the artist's mindset in looking at places like this and how different people over the centuries have looked at it to help us when we do use a piece of art to at least think about the artists who've, who've made those paintings, who's commissioned them, what, what lies behind their motivation. Um, move on here. This is the earliest image, I think, that exists, uh, definitely the earliest image that I've found, um, of, of Cannon Street, <laughs> or one part of it is Cannon Street. Obviously, this Cannon Street is a, a 19th century construction, and this, we're in the um, 13th century here. The artist is the, the, he's a bit hidden by all the raffle prizes, but um, <laughs> it's, it's the monk here, Matthew uh, Paris, who's actually from St Albans, and this is one image of an itinerary um, to Jerusalem, and the monks would use these um, itineraries. They didn't. So the monks would not have travelled there, but or not all of them. Um, but they would use that to enact um, the idea of 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 going on a pilgrimage. So it's part of their. Um, so this image, part of created by Matthew Paris was all part of their, their worship and their way of thinking of the world. So they had a, a, a way of looking at the world. Wait. I'm diving really far forward now, a few, other, a few centuries forward. So I think this is, again, one of the earliest um, images of Ken Street. I should say that the, the red, where I've tried to place the red square in each of these images is approximately where um, Cannon Street is, where the steel yard in this picture was, in this drawing, um, which was discovered, I think, in this, this print is from a copper plate that was discovered in the 19th century, but the copper plate dates from um, the time from the 16th, uh, 16th century. Um, and I've picked some of the characters who would have, who would have been there, and these are by uh, the, the artist Hans Hoban the Younger, who you'll, you probably wouldn't know through his work um, of Henry VIII, it's an iconic image of him. And these, these two characters here are people who would have worked at the steel yard that were traders, wealthy traders from, from Germany in, in that point there. So, so it's worth thinking about um, portraiture as a way to understand the kind of activities that would have occurred on the foreshore and some of the objects in there are probably things you might find on the foreshore there. Um, another way of portraying the same scene, very general, it's almost impossible to place a, a red square on there to say where it is, but it's, uh, it's a Delphi plate from, it's probably the earliest dated one from um, 1600, nicely dated on here. Um, and it gives you many of the features that are you can see from the foreshore, um, uh, but in a kind of stylized way. Uh, it, the, the potters were based at Allgate. Um, they were Flemish with Italian roots, and so the decoration has been described as Italianate. Um, so it gives you one another image there. Right. <laughs> see you. Here's another image of the foreshore, and that square is, <laughs> again, it looks like an accurate picture, but it's, it's, it's difficult to place. It's, it simplifies um, what you can see there. But obviously, it's, a, it's about recording a, a dramatic event, obviously, the Great Fire of London. And there's, as art, artists, when they're looking at um, Their approach to thing is to create the drama of the situation and not the, the the emotion of the situation, really. And that was repeated again 350 years later in the um, in this work or things that people would have experienced or may have seen in 2016, where they recreated in wood 
the um, London, the city of London, and they and they burnt it in this way. Oh, who's saying that? <laughs> what, do I, what do I press? Oh, it's gone. Um, so I've, I've taken some of my photographs from there at the time. Um, so getting an understanding of what, of an event that occurred on the foreshore and whether we can really find those events in the archaeology is, is, is one of the challenges or one of the things we might find. Okay. Um, how we think of the how we think of the Thames is quite influenced by events that happen due to um, incident or accident or um, conflict, but also events that are staged on the Thames to make the Thames look a certain thing. Um, and this is um, Cadaletto. He's quite influential. Not only is his painters well known, but also he influenced many other artists at the time. It's kind of the painters are produced to for commercial reasons, to, to please their patrons, the, the people who enjoyed the Grand Tour, and that they projected the idea of, of uh, the Grand Tour on, onto London. Um, so that gives you another sort of painting here. A century later, <laughs> there's, a, there's another view of looking at, at London, um, and this is caricaturist um, John Leach, and his illustration, The Silent Highway, um, shows St Paul's, but the smokestack industries at the time, um, and London Bridge there, I think. Um, and it gives a fairly dark impression of London. And that, that image has been used more recently by Banksy, if you might have seen his work on the, in Bristol, <laughs> on the side of a boat. So he's actually put that image on the side of the boat and it's been moved quite recently um, and preserved. Or, that's from 2003. These are sort of images that we've used when we're trying to interpret finds on, on the, uh, the foreshore around the brewery site. Um, this first one is from 1866. It's the building of Country Station. So a far more optimistic image than the Silent Highway image. Um, and you can see the, the position here is Country Chase is massive and big and it dominates over the brewery. The brewery gets rebuilt and somehow Country Chase gets tiny and small and the brewery gets big and imposing. This, this we've looked at uh, on the foreshore and the remains of this structure remain on the foreshore as, as part of the river wall. Um, so we can tie the images together and see about the scale. Uh, Country Station has in modern times been widened or the, the bridge has been widened and, and rebuilt with concrete and so on. Um, so in the late 19th century many artists did uh, works, paintings of of the Thames um, that are quite well known like Whistler, Monet um, and earlier in the century Turner um, but not many painted particularly Cannon Street <laughs> or that part of the Thames so there's a Ten tendency to focus on Westminster at one end, Tower Bridge at the other end. In between is less of a thing. But um, Deran in visited London for a period of time, and he painted quite a few images of that from the middle bit. <laughs> Maybe that's how the market works. I don't know. But so this is Cannon Street Bridge. So that's the railroad bridge you saw in the early illustration. You can see through there London Bridge, and then beyond the fairly newly built Tower Bridge. But as a not as a focus, but as something in the background, something's coming. It's kind of um, through there. That should be probably dotted lines. Through there is the bit that's on the square, slightly different angle. Um, you can see the sailing barges here, where today you've got the um, the waste barges from the city. So, yeah. <laughs> ah, so this is another way of interpreting London, and it's called the Wonderground Map of London. Um, it, was, it, was originally, it was commissioned in 1914, and the idea of the image uh, was, and it was commissioned by Frank Pick, who was uh, head of London Underground at the time, from, and it's part of his whole process of making the underground seem a more positive place. It had a very grim image at the time. And Max, um, Max Gill is the artist, 
it, it's the whole of London. I've just cropped out the bit around Cannon Street um, to give you an idea. But the idea was to, it's propaganda really, to make people optimistic. He, he was also commissioned to do a similar job for the Port of London Authority, and this is the image, but it was ne I don't, we don't think it was ever published according to the photographer of this. Um, so uh, maybe you couldn't make the Port of London seem positive. <laughs> I don't know. But he, you, he's tried to create a... But it does include the country, just nicely there. <laughs> so I thought we'd keep his little. There's an image I want to use of... Um, Richard Nevison, he's part, he's a futurist painter, or he's influenced by the futurists, um, and he's most famous for his work during the First World War. Um, this is a much later painting of the, of the Thames, but the, the picture I don't have, because <laughs> I couldn't get the copyright for it, um, but I, you can have a look at it if you want to look it up. It's probably one of the earliest aerial photographs, or aerial paintings, I don't know if that's such a thing, um, viewpoints of London, so he's suspended in a balloon and he's painting um, looking down from London Bridge looking down the Thames and um, with the searchlights flying and that's just an abstract picture he did at about the same time of the, um, the searchlights across London so his perspective is one of elevation and that, that's something about modern painting is uh, we, we now have a different point of view and as, as archaeologists we can use aerial and aerial things but obviously when people designed things and built things in the past they didn't have that point of view so it's worth thinking about that um, this is an artist who um, John Minton who had a kind of tragic end to his life um, and he was he, partly because he fell out of favour as an artist in, in the 50s but he's had a kind of revival since but this is a, a view from Cannon Street Station onto um, well it's quite difficult to know where he's looking. <laughs> so some help will be appreciated on that one, interpreting where it is. But it, it is a kind of interesting, beautiful picture of, of that, of a moment in time. Uh, you, you could compare to Daran earlier with the sailboats, you've got the mechanical age. Um, oh, this is, uh, as you, you can read all that, <laughs> um, Leon Kossoff, who's, who's still alive. Um, he's a living artist. His, his, the painting I found, I'm not even sure where on the riverside this is, but it's comparing, this is the abstraction, but there's a, you can see there's a person here, there's some supporting piles, and maybe said, I don't know, there's part of a bridge. <laughs> so um, another a kind of more abstract approach to looking at, looking at, uh, looking at foreshore or the riverside. Um, this, this, Francis actually provided this to me, so I, I thought I'd share all of it. Um, but this is really a kind of beautiful, in, interesting illustration, it, something that's kind of evocative for us, as people who go down to the foreshore, is a, um, a kind of activity you might do a, on a, a monitoring visit, maybe. Obviously, we don't pick up finds <laughs> or keep them. But we'd find those things on here. So a couple of... <laughs> images of that the rest of it you can you can read at your own measure or say that um, the last image i picked on is this is actually uh, the concrete pillars and street uh, this is commissioned um by traffic for london um, the arts on the underground project for the river services on there and it's, the idea is creating paintings from the point of view of people on the boat um, on the river services so there's two images there that give you I, I think that's Cannon Street. I don't know where that is. So <laughs> I'll leave that for something to think about. So that's, that's the end of the